an elected official on this board, and uh, I'm very much appreciative towards uh, the makeup of the board and the staff and superintendent uh, for their hard work. And it's also a great privilege to be um, a part of this country. We have a great um, number of freedoms that we enjoy. And uh, so with that today, I've asked um, a former student when I was a resource officer to come and have the opening prayer, followed by um, the Pledge of Allegiance and the presentation of colors from the Citrus High School ROTC. I would like to ask uh, Brian Sullivan, Reverend Sullivan, to come um, up front. He is uh, a 1994 graduate of Citrus High School. He went on to college to play baseball at Palm Beach Atlantic University and graduated from there in 1998. Um, went to work on the foreign mission field and now he's back. He's decided to, to move back home to Citrus County. We're so glad that he's here. He's the pastor of Christ Community Church in Lacanto, and I've asked him to uh, have an opening prayer. And I, uh, at this time, I'd like everyone to please stand for the prayer and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and the presentation of colors. Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for each of these officials that have been elected. We thank you for uh, the Citrus County uh, School Board and Citrus County uh, School System. Father, we pray uh, your blessing upon all the teachers and the faculty and the administration. Father, we pray your blessing on the students. We pray that you give wisdom. You ask, you say to ask uh, for wisdom, and so we ask for it from you, that you will shower and lavish it upon uh, those that are teaching and investing, the coaches that are walking beside uh, each of these students. We pray uh, for your uh, amazing uh, gift of grace that is insurmountable to be poured out and uh, lavished upon all those involved in the Citrus County uh, school system. Father, we pray that you would bless them and cause your face to shine upon them and that great fruit and uh, the faithfulness and hard work of those who labor uh, would be uh, uh, commended, Father, and that you would be honored and uh, that there would be great uh, reward that is seen here uh, in this life and in the next. Father, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Citrus High School. Currently we have approximately 126 cadets that are active in the program. Uh, our course involves mainly uh, aerospace science, leadership education, and wellness and fitness with our <coughs> overall mission to uh, build citizens of character dedicated to serving our nation and our community. We try to instill values of citizenship and teach the students how to better uh, get through high school and go on to meet their goals. Our number one goal in our program is to help the students meet their goals. As a matter of fact, at the beginning of every year, we sit down with every single student and find out what they want to do, where they want to go, and we actively pursue that throughout the course of the program to help them reach their goals. Uh, not only do we do uh, academics, uh, we do many uh, community service events so far uh, this year, uh, the school year, 36 different events including color guards, uh, highway cleanups, volunteers for uh, Friends of the Library, parking for football games, the uh, Dragon Boat Festival, 
a band competition. We run the Citrus High School Blood Drive with uh, volunteers. We cover all the parades and are active with uh, the local Veterans Administration, the American Legion, and the uh, VFW for uh, needed uh, color guards or ceremonies. We always provide manpower. Uh, so far this year, we've served uh, over 1,904 community service hours just in the uh, past semester. And uh, we're down there, we're willing and able. If th there's events that you need support, you need manpower, our cadets are always uh, willing and able to help out. So thank you very much. Regardless, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dodd. Um, and thank you, students. We value so much um, you coming and, and making sure that they're a part of our board meeting. So I appreciate that, Mr. Dodd. Okay, we are going to uh, adopt the agenda, so if I can get a motion. Move to adopt the agenda. I have a motion by Ms. Bryant, a second by Ms. Powers, to adopt the agenda as recommended by the superintendent. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Citizens' comments, do we have any green cards? No, we have a second opportunity at 5-30. And if we can approve the consent agenda. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Balfour, a second by Mr. Dodd, to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. If you can uh, do our recognition of our donations, please. Yes, sir. We have several recommendations of donations on the consent agenda and there's a five hundred dollar donation to Homicide Elementary School for public supermarkets, a fifteen hundred dollar donation to Lacanto High School for Joe Rigney Scholarship Fund from Chad Revere, a thousand dollar donation to Citrus High School for Chuck Everidge, and a five hundred dollar donation to Lister Future Technical College from Citrus Mill Park Park Park. That concludes our donation. And we thank the community for their continual service to our students and to our schools. We truly could not do it without you. Um, we will move on to the recognition of our school with the highest contributions to the 2014-15 Citrus County District United Way. Good afternoon, school board members, Superintendent Himmel, Assistant Superintendent Mr. Mullen, School Board Attorney Mr. Bradshaw. Yes, I am here this afternoon to announce and congratulate the school with the highest overall contribution to the Citrus County District campaign. As you know, we have two outstanding organizations, the Education Foundation and United Way, who are the recipients for this campaign. It's with great pleasure that I announce the winner for the overall contributions is Citrus Springs Elementary School and Mindy Weed, coming up with Alice Harold, the principal to accept, had facilitated. year in a row for Citrus Springs Elementary, so we're going to tap into Mindy Weed and find out what her secret is. Um, would it be okay to have a representative of the Please. Mr. Stephen Barberi from the Education Foundation and Mr. Eric Head and Dr. Vernon Lawler <coughs> will be representing the United Way. And in a few minutes after the picture, they've asked to just say a word to the board. On behalf of the Citrus County Education Foundation, we just want to say uh, thank you to Citrus Springs Elementary School and all of the uh, amazing teacher staff and school district employees who gave to this year's annual giving campaign. Uh, we're so humbled to get that type of support from the teachers that we support and, and the uh, staff members that we support. Uh, our sole mission is to help you guys out and, and fund what you do and for you guys to um, take a little out of your paycheck and, and show support back. It really, really means a lot and uh, we couldn't be more proud that Citrus Springs won it again. Uh, as promised at the uh, representatives meeting, Ms. Himmel, myself, and Mr. Head will be at your school shortly to <coughs> cook you all lunch and, uh, and we hope you enjoy that. So again, congratulations. <laughs>
I think we got a special hairnet for you, Sam. Yeah. Uh, so we look forward to doing that and, and can't say thank you enough to you and all the school district employees you gave this year. Thank you. And on behalf of the Board of Directors of the United Way of Citrus County, I also wanted to say thank you and congratulations to Citrus Springs Elementary <coughs> School. And thanks to all the schools who have campaigned again, all the individual employees who support the United Way and all the projects the United Way takes on and all those who receive our services. So thank you. And thank you also to the school board for continued support. Uh, I have a message from Amy Meek. She's, she's home with a sick child today, but she wanted me to express a special thanks to Mandy for, again, doing a fantastic job as campaign chair. Uh, at Citrus Springs Elementary, so thank you very much. Thank you so much. We are moving on to business and support services. Mr. Blocker. Good afternoon. We're here to ask for approval of budget amendment number four for December 2014. I move to approve budget number four, December 2014. I have a motion by Ms. Bryant, a second by Ms. Balfour to approve budget amendment number four, December 2014. Questions? Comments? The majority of it is like from the third calculation, those are the changes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Mr. Bishop. Good afternoon. I'd like to ask that we request the approval of the uh, instructional and support recommendations. Mr. Bishop, we're going to exercise line item veto on some of these names. Because these are some people that we really would like to. So, um, <laughs> There's, uh, there's some wonderful people that I know are getting ready to have a retirement and enjoy the next stage of their lives. But, uh, their service is, is quite valued. Um, and I don't want to miss anything, so I'm just going to tell you, please, if you're here, this probably was something that we're talking about. So please, we value all of you that are retiring, and, and we're going to miss you a lot. I'd like to make a motion to approve the instructional and support recommendations. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Balfour, a second by Ms. Powers, to approve the instructional support recommendations. Any more comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. My next agenda item is to request approval of the new job description for the position of physical education teacher at the secondary level. Uh, board members, we can take a motion and then we can ask some questions if you have any. I'll make a motion to approve the new job description for the physical education teacher in the secondary level. Second. Have a motion by Ms. Balfour. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have a motion by Ms. Balfour, a second by Ms. Bryant, to approve the new job description for a position of physical education teacher secondary level. Questions, comments? As the board uh, has some discussion, I would, would like to point out a couple of uh, suggested changes from the uh, job description that you have in front of you. I'd like to draw your attention to number 11 on the job description under performance responsibilities, where it says co uh, coaches a minimum of one sport per school year. We, on your copy, it says as deemed necessary by the school administrator. Um, after having some conversation with Ms. Powers, um, we've been requested to change that to the as to when. So it would read when deemed necessary by the school administrator. And the second area I'd like to draw your attention to is under the qualifications, number two. Your copy should say competence in the subject area matter assigned to teach. After having some conversation there, um, the request was made to change that to proficiency in subject matter assigned to teach. Do we need to revise that at all, Mr. Bradshaw? Um, for those changes, because they were not part of the original. It's just for marriage. It's not changing the message of the amendment. No. It's not changing the meaning, so we shouldn't need to amend it. Yeah, if you just go to approve the recommendation. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, somebody would just amend there. I'd like to amend my motion of approving the new job description for the position of physical education teacher at the secondary level with the noted changes for this meeting. And just to repeat, I have a motion by Ms. Balfour, a second by Ms. Bryan to approve the new job description for the position of physical education teacher secondary level with the noted changes. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. I'd like to ask the board's approval um, of the new job description for the teacher of virtual school. I move to approve the new job description for the teacher of virtual school. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, second by Mr. Dodd, to approve the new job description for teacher at virtual school. Any questions or comments? I just need to finish on this and proceed to answer clarification. Uh, what was Mr. Clark, I think I asked, who was going to evaluate and how they were going to evaluate? And uh, Mr. Bishop, did you want to speak to that? Or, or Mr. Clark, is there? Oh, there he is. Good to see you. Good afternoon, members of the school board, Superintendent Ms. Hipple, Assistant Superintendent Mr. Mullen, and the school board attorney, Mr. Bradshaw. If you recall, this is actually the start of hiring a virtual teacher, and our plans are to actually post this position to take over our online course that we're doing right now. Again, this would save our district some money in regards to uh, us taking ownership over that course, and we would actually purchase that uh, from our virtual um, for the content content on the curriculum, we'd have this teacher. Uh, obviously, the uh, supervision would fall upon me uh, for right now to um, implement this. I've been working with uh, this high schools in regards to this. Observation of this, would we would still be using some uh, similar instruments in place for observation. By having a teacher in our district as a virtual teacher, there will be an opportunity for them to come in and actually make visitations to those classes that we are currently actually holding the blended learning. They'll be communicating with those students one-to-one -one on a periodic basis, maybe once or twice a quarter, and I would observe that interaction that's going on. I'll be able to have access to uh, the lessons, the communication provided by uh, Florida Virtual's venue uh, to be able to do that. So, I, And I'm also, I told Mrs. Powers on the telephone is that we've been uh, using Seminole County as a, a big resource for our um, uh, getting up and started. We've had a couple of conversations with Deb Camilleri over there, and so I hope to basically have some further conversation with her about just basically kind of creating rubrics for online uh, observations. Thank you. Um, Mr. Clotter, did, is it, are we doing that, are we mirroring up or applying a curriculum from Florida yes. Virtual or from Seminole? <coughs> no, we are going to be purchasing the curriculum directly from Florida Virtual. We will continue with the social media course and there's training that they actually uh, that we will have our teacher actually participate with Florida Virtual on um, every aspect of their of their curriculum. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Any other questions? All those in favor? As, as, as oh, I'm sorry. If you don't mind. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. The job description. I'll, uh, oh, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> draw your attention to number 16. You'll see that was a typo there. We're going to amend the job description to move number 17 up to number 16. Number 16 was just a blank. And with that, then I will call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. My next item is to request approval of the job description changes for the position of coordinator of Title I and No Child Left Behind. I can have a motion. I make a motion to approve the job description changes for the position of coordinator of Title I and No Child Left Behind. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Balfour, a second by Mr. Dodd, to approve the job description changes for the position of coordinator of Title I and No Child Left Behind. Any questions or comments? There was a question that was about the middle school and the executive summer. Yes, ma'am. Um, on your copy of me, say middle school, um, we've asked, we spoke with Mr. Hebert. Mr. Hebert asked if we could leave that as a secondary, uh, to read secondary under qualifications, number three, the minimum of five years successful teaching and or administrative experience at the elementary and or secondary level. But on the executive summary, it says additional administrative experience at the middle school level. And we're going to change that to be secondary to level. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, so there is a change on this? It will be a change to secondary level. Yes, sir. 
That's on number three, yes, where it's underlined there. Yes, sir. All right, let me just make sure I understand. So the change is already on here because it's underlined. I'm not talking about a change, it's not on our. Under the qualifications, you'll see where. Um, it says and or secondary. Yes, that is what, that's what we wanted. Mr. Dodd, you're correct. The exa only the executive summary had it. On the, on the, the had it is incorrect. But the policy, I mean, the job description is, you're correct. The job description is correct. It's on the agenda request. That <clears throat> I have a silly question. I didn't think we called it No Child Left Behind anymore. Do we, is it still called that? I thought there was a new name for is it? No, it's still. It is still that? Okay. Well, they reauthorized. Is that, oh, sorry. I thought they, they did, but I thought they called it a different name. That was just my hope. <laughs> um, any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. And lastly, I would like to request the board's approval of the new job description for lead teacher, Academy of Environmental Science. I'll make a motion that we approve the new job description for lead teacher of the Academy of Environmental Science. Second. <coughs> Have a have a motion by Mr. Dodd, a second by Ms. Bry Ms. Bryant, to approve the job <coughs> description for Lead Teacher Academy of Environmental Science. Any questions or comments? As the board has discussion, I'd like to draw your attention to number 10. After speaking to Ms. Powers, um, the question was raised um, regarding the word liaison on number 10. I believe your copy will read, develop and maintain positive school slash community relations as and, and act as a liaison between school board, school, school board and community. Um, the request was to change the word liaison to contact. I think that actually makes sense. It's probably more accurate. Yeah, because what implies that there are issues mm -hmm. to solve, the other just implies that they're cooperating with um, Can we just have, Mr. John, can you just modify your, if you would, if you're okay with that, modifying your uh, motion to include? Uh, those change. Yeah, and I'm not sure I really understand what what's the what's the difference in those two. The way it reads with the liaison between school school board and community seems like they're three separate elements that perhaps are uh, very di differing too much or different. Where if you just contact these people, who are cooperate, um, and it just have, has a different implication, and the contact is positive. Okay, I'll amend my motion um, that we approve the new job description for lead teacher Academy of Environmental Science with change from ladies on the contact. I'll amend my second. Anything else? I'm going to go ahead and call it again. I have a motion by Mr. Dodd, a second by Ms. Bryant, to approve the new job description for lead teacher Academy of Environmental Science with modification on performance responsibilities number 10, changing the word liaison to contact. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Budget update. Okay, real briefly, um, <clears throat> drawing your attention to our annual uh, district budget kickoff meeting will take place next Wednesday at, uh, on February 18th. All district administrators will come to the meeting. We'll go over some uh, highlights of what we anticipate this year's budget to forecast it year end to look like, and then also give some uh, foresight on what we believe the budget will look like for the FY16 year. Uh, at that time, we'll also go over the governor's budget and give some insight onto that and how we feel that's all going to shake out at the end. <clears throat> we'll come back to you on February 24th or 20, uh, yeah, 24th and have a budget workshop with y'all for the initial budget workshop with the board uh, to go over a lot of that same information that we do with the district administrators and kind of start the ball rolling as far as the budget cycle goes for this year. Um, one question I have for y'all, you kind of know, except for Mr. Dodd, um, how we have done this in the past. Any specifics that you want me to bring to you for that initial kickoff, any thoughts, concerns, ideas? Anything you want me to cover with you other than what I typically do on those initial type of budget kickoff meetings with you and kind of give you some background information and foresight information. So if there's anything specific that you want me to bring to you, um, you can kind of think about it. If you want to get back with me, that's fine. Um, and then, right, right. 
the main thing we'll be going with initially will be the, the general fund budget. That's always the kind of the, the pertinent one at hand that we, we initially uh, kicked off the uh, season with. Um, this week, as you know, is FTE week for the fourth calculation. Uh, Friday is date certain, which is also Friday the 13th. I don't want to throw any omens out there, but I know that doesn't come back to haunt us. But because um, we're certainly hoping that we maintain that number we did, you know, back in October, that would certainly be a benefit to us because the third <coughs> did, did look pretty good compared to what the original budget was. So, any questions, uh, concerns? <coughs> Please let me know. We'll move back to you in two weeks to go over uh, the initial uh, budget workshop for the FY16 year and kind of kick that season off. The only thing, that, unless the board has any issues, um, maybe if we can provide the hard copy on a on a as requested basis as far as the books. Um, this will be initially be a PowerPoint. This first. okay. Yeah, once we get into the book cycle, that'll be into the. Uh, July and September, um, but this will be a PowerPoint. My goal will be hopefully to send it out to you beforehand. I can't tell you for sure that I'll, it'll be done precisely for that to happen, but certainly it'll be here. If you need a copy, you'll give you a copy, but it'll be in a PowerPoint presentation. Good. All right, thank you. This Go, go right ahead. And Pastor Sullivan would introduce your family. I see two children there who might be future members of the system. I see Mary Dick who was, and uh, I guess John's at work, so we can't get him. But would you introduce the family to the work? And sorry, it's <laughs> surprise. Um, uh, this is my beautiful wife, Lisa, of 16 years. <clears throat> and our uh, three children, our boys are twins. Uh, John Caleb Sullivan, Charles Haddon Sullivan, and Elizabeth Joy Sullivan. And uh, Joy was uh, born in China, and so under her foot it says made in China. Like <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. And let's see you over this. We have, we have three children we can work on in the future to bring them into the school system. <laughs> and of course, his mom. Mary Sullivan. Oh, yes, Mary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 This is my mom, my wonderful mom. So, um, and, uh, and, and Aunt Carolyn, and then um, uh, my wonderful sister, uh, that's six years older than me. And um, so, anyway. <laughs> I think John was represented here, although I think he's at work, by your humor, because he seemed to have got the humor from him. So. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Powers, for doing that. Um, I do have one question in regards to the budget. Um, yes, go right ahead. So I know this is generally for um, revenues, and I don't know if the impact fees issue would be covering that on where we stand. Is that uh, typically brought so this workshop? More of the general fund. Probably the next workshop will start getting to the capital and five year work plan. Okay. Um, we just kind of do it in stages at the beginning. To Kind of set the foundation for the general fund where we think that's going to be headed and then the next workshop will start tackling the uh, the capital plan and looking at what the five-year work plan looks like okay thank and you we'll certainly address those impact fees there and, that, and that that's be in another workshop most likely yeah, yeah. for the persons coming in to at that workshop to discuss the impact fees with us the expert on impact sure what, what we oh, have scheduled that yeah. and i want to say it's the 24th that's, that's oh, what i thought it was no no february february okay that'll be so so that is the same same day as we're we're gonna yeah what that though mr dodd is is your correct and, and mr blocker is we're going to be talking having the impact fee uh presentation and information on that with regards though to planning of the impact fees in our budget that'll come under the capital portion and we have that usually at this yeah we take one at one workshop and one at another i believe there is no workshop in march because of spring break no it'll be the april, april workshop. workshop okay thank you Thank you for checking on this for that. Uh, approve the minutes. Move to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Bryan, second by Ms. Powers to approve the minutes. Any questions, comments, changes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Attorney Legal Matters. 
<laughs> I know, that's what I was thinking. We're good with that. We can take that. Yes. Yes, Miss Anna. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I am your job security. Okay? Um, this past week we received a letter from the Department of Education, but it came to us through Senator Payne's office because he sent a letter to DOT for uh, Department of Transportation for his support and telling that he did support after we sent copies of our letters for the issues that we're having at middle school entrance. And um, I spoke to Jim Foxhold and told him we appreciate everything they did, that our goal was to expedite and move it up. He did inform me that he would have a team here this week reviewing what was going on in the primary district. So, Linda Bergami has a copy of the letter. If anybody wants a copy or wants to see it, but I've given it to her to put Chuck Dixon's file with the DOT communication and what's going on in the primary I don't need a copy. I can just, I need that. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but several times we address the 41 and the intersection of Middle School Drive 41. Uh, <coughs> have you comment on it? It's been several years, and several times we've done it. So, did uh, we want to add any more to it, or do you want to summarize what, what we've done in the past, or, or just wait? Yes, my husband it? calls me every day at 2:30 and talks about that entrance. <laughs> so we need to get something done. But I keep reminding him we didn't change the bail schedule. He needs to go different routes. But. Um, <laughs> They're looking at maybe expediting and getting moving up a little closer, but there's been discussion by Senator Dean to move the to like the light of the intersection closer to where the old restaurant was, Frankie's, that area. But according to Chuck Dixon, that that wouldn't work because according to the sep it's called separation statute from DOT, where there has to be at least a quarter of a mile if it's a two lane, four lane road half a mile if it's a two-lane road, that there has to be a separation in lights. So some the recommendation from DOT or some of the conversation from DOT and from our staff has been to move it north of Emerson Middle School. So they're coming back to look at it because remember just that intersection is really bad at 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon. So they're just looking at what other ways they can do that as they move forward with changing the way 41 lanes. And I think the problem we had was we don't own the property going the other direction, right. but we do own it in the direction DOT was, in theory, suggesting what it would need to be. Have they ever played with staggering dismissal times? I mean, I know that it's hard at that grade level when you look at middle compared to high school. Is there, okay. We've looked at a couple of things. Last year it was suggested by a board member to us block the gate, and we did. <laughs> there, that was a revolution. And, um, <laughs> But, you know, they've talked about maybe not allowing people coming <clears throat> south on 41 to turn left to make, you know, force that entrance to go around. And it's really, it, when those buses come out, it just stops traffic. So, and the staggering of times would impact the pickup and drop off of buses. So they're looking at different ways and how they can add turning lanes and those types of things. So, so the latter may have sparked them to, you know, move a little faster. I don't know that they will, but they are sending a team down here. And I do have his personal cell phone now. <laughs> so, so just to give you an update on that. Mr. Dodd, thank you for uh, having us. We we have struggled with it continuously from putting in the gate, I think we put in something else, we put in stripe, re -stroke, uh, striped, I think the, uh, the and we, we've tried lots of things from that we can control, and this is one of those we can't control this part. Um, and, you know, we talked about Emerson Middle School, but when you look at Emerson Primary School in the mornings, traffic's backed up way past the high school and past the hospital at times because there's Citrus Springs Elementary School, they're lined up. So, you know, a lot of our schools were there before a lot of the businesses were put in place, so they just weren't built to get traffic's all, the traffic off the road. So, but 41, I know, is a um, future expansion, so they're trying to improve that with it. Citrus Springs Middle School, it will go cars almost past Central Ridge as it goes back out and and you pretty much can't make another turn in from Citrus Springs for the same reason. Um, the difference is we don't have the traffic on Citrus Springs that we have at 41. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we can redirect from that one. Um, Mr. Blocker, did you have anything else? I'm good, thanks. Mr. Potter, did you have anything? 
Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mullen? Mr. Dodd? Yes, I have a couple things. Um, kind of goes along with some other issues with traffic, but, um, you know, there is a need at Pleasant Grove also for sidewalks. I've spoken with uh, the principal in Kirby over there, and she's been working on that with Chuck Dixon. I think that's a good idea. We look at that and we do what we can uh, to promote uh, a sidewalk that would uh, run down 581. There's a Evans Zini's development, but there's some other um, housing um, apartments and duplexes there where students are walking now past First Baptist Church on down to the school. Uh, she told me that she had had contact with uh, the, with First Baptist, which I thought was good, and um, that they are they don't have any problems. I mean, they would be for that. Um, so I'm hoping that we can work uh, through some things there to get some funding and also have been in contact with some other people with the community traffic safety team on some possible funding for that. But it is good. I, I like it. I like to see the principals, you know, actively involved in trying to come up with solutions for safety issues. So that's a good thing. But I wanted to mention that because that may be coming up to the board at some time. I'd also um, <clears throat> like to note that um, I saw a very good interview uh, today on Bay News 9 regarding uh, Senator John Legg and some a bill, a bill that he has before the Senate that dealt a lot with, uh, with testing. I thought it was very interesting to hear his comments. So I think uh, there could be some value uh, to the board members to you know pulling that up. It was an interview today. Uh, it lasted five, seven minutes and it was very informative. Um, you know, we're all interested in what's going to happen in this next legislative session. We've been told that education is going to be one of the priorities, and we really, I really hope that is the case. And we, as I think this board agrees, that we want to keep pressure on the legislature to make some changes and to do some things. And so I know they're, um, according to the center leg, they're getting pressure from a lot of superintendents and a lot of board members. So I'm hoping that there will be some changes. I know from time to time we get emails too from parents in regards to. Uh, testing issues. I think uh, there was one we all got this this last week in regards to that, and so that is something that is uh, is still very important. It's important to this board, I think. Um, I had a couple items for discussion. I, I don't know if it, it should be uh, something that we could discuss in the workshop, and so, um, but I just want to talk to the Chairman Mr. Kennedy a little bit about that process for uh, just some basic housekeeping things. I know we had talked about at one time that we would we would be going over some policies uh, for the board to follow, and that would probably be more the, the appropriate time to bring up some ideas. I just have some, some, some general ideas, um, but I just wanted to know what, when that opportunity would be. And we've been, we've been working on the, the agendas, and keep in mind that the agendas get very packed, and so while this day we're kind of whipping through on a board day, the workshop days, um, they, they're much more in depth. So we've been taking about three to four policies um, at a workshop because of the amount of time involved, usually when we uh, talk about those. I believe we have it on April's to have the, the board conversation. Some of that will occur on February 24th, Mr. Kennedy, when we go through and have five policies come forward on that day. No, the board policy that the the board discussion for I believe is on the April agenda. Is that I couldn't remember. It's a question. I'm sorry. I had it down for February 24th. Is it the afternoon that we have for the uh, for board? Because I I don't I didn't think so because we we we're going to have Mr. West there. Yes, he's able to join us now. His hearing has been. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Okay, that was not made aware of me. Um, that's okay. Um, Let's then, if we can, fit it in on the, on the February agenda. The reason we had to take it off of the February agenda was because Wes wasn't going to be here initially, so we had to push it. It's on there. It's on there now? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's on there. Um, what we've done in the past is we moved us, um, recessed, and had us go upstairs so that we can have a little bit more of a round table conversation instead of this kind of formal which com doesn't tend to lend itself for us to have a, a good collaboration. And, it's, and so we've you know, kind of been able to do that, go up there, take our jackets off, and just kind of have a conversation as opposed to still in the public because we have to meet sunshine, but it, it definitely allows us to have a little better conversation. Right. And what I'm talking about is more, I think, would be attuned to that type of meeting rather than in our 
monthly board meetings. So right. I would be, I would like to be able to have that opportunity in that favorite workshop. We can talk <coughs> about some things. I would like to mention that, you know, as we as school board members, we are assigned different um, committees and different school enhancement um, or, uh, groups, committee organizations. Um, that one of the things that I wanted to bring forth is that. Um, as you know, Citrus Memorial Hospital has been planning a trauma center. Um, and at one time, there was some concerns that we had. We did some work behind the scenes. And uh, Chuck Dixon is here. And I appreciate the work that Chuck has done um, on that and meet with uh, the CEO of the hospital, Ralph Alleman, and make sure that um, the placement of that helipad would not be in a way that would cause distraction for our two schools right across the street on Line Avenue, that's Citrus High School and Primary School. So they were looking at one location and that was right off Line Avenue and they have uh, since changed that uh, to build the helipad um, closer or on the east side of the hospital where the entrance is to the emergency room right now. It's going to be a second floor um, helipad. And so that will help, I think, in that area. And I know Mr. Dixon's here. I didn't know if you would like to address that to the board, Chuck, or um, if you would. I see. Can't really honestly say that I had anything to do with where they decided to put it, but. Uh, <laughs> I did meet with them just to make sure they were aware that we did have some concerns about whether or not it would be a distraction and they told me that most of the flights would be north to south and that, that there would only be like two a day and it shouldn't be a major distraction. There are lots of hospital trauma units that are close to elementary schools and the fact that it's on the east side of the building where you won't be able to see it. Is, uh, I, I don't think it will present a problem, but they do. They are aware of our concerns, and if there are any changes that need to be made in the future, I'm sure that they'll take that into consideration and do what they can. I think it'll be a good thing for Citrus County. Right, and I know we had talked. I talked to the superintendent, so that was the, her plan to send Mr. Dixon over there to make sure we cover all the bases. But the hospital is obviously, I think, wants to be good neighbors as we want to be good neighbors to them. So I just wanted to make that. Well, at the Citrus High School uh, SACS committee, uh, there was some good discussion or it was brought up about, uh, one of the parents brought up an issue over an academy um, at Citrus High School. Um, uh, the Health Academy is at Crystal River. We have the IB program at Lecanto. That's something I would like to get an update on at some point, maybe at the next meeting, so that I can, um, or that we can better understand those possibilities of some type of an academy at Citrus High School. So. I'm, I'm not really sure who to direct that to. Mr. Todd, you know, that's been a conversation we've actually had extensively about wanting to do an academy um, at one of those. I've brought up quite a bit the fact that we have um, Mr. Lindsay's program there that building off of a uh, engineering manufacturing type thing. I know Ms. Hamill's talked about that. Um, we also have, because we have WC, WTC next door, uh, there could be some, some things uh, to work with that. I, I think it's been really who we can direct it is, is we just need to bring it to uh, Mr. Clotter and I think um, have a discussion if that's a direction. I think we all are in agreement to it. Staffing becomes a challenge and, and one of the challenges, and, and Mr. Clotter you can step up, one of the challenges that we've had is, you know, we talk about IV that we are huge fans of, so I don't want to make it this power, but you know, IV for example has its own coordinator and that's an additional staffing unit. Um, at the Crystal River Health Academy, um, they've you know struggled in how to maintain their numbers without adding the cost of that. And as you'll see, as we start getting into the general budget, the issue is we want those things, but how do we afford those things? Because we've got to keep also the primary focus there. So I think that's been uh, you know sometimes where that conversation has gone to. I still think we can have our cake and eat it too. So I'd like to see us you know, move down that road. Mr. Clark. So, Doc, we actually had a conversation with Mr. Hilbert at the beginning of the year and then just recently. So I know that he's communicated with uh, Gail Nobles and myself about a potential academy. So if you would like an update on the Health Academy and the Art Academy, we can do that. 
but we basically have conversations starting, but we want to basically start to have that conversation at our, our combined offices with Mr. Hilbert so that we can kind of lay that groundwork down. Well, we have a business We did it. What yeah, it actually was, there was actually at one time a business emphasis at all three of the schools, but again, when you're looking for a true academy, you're looking for those supportive courses that will actually give that child a track for a post-secondary career. So uh, it basically was a focus in those schools, but it actually did not lead to a certification. I think one of the things, too, that we have to keep doing, it's like a Crystal River. Are, you know, are we meeting at each academy those things? Because like, like you're saying, we have a business academy at each school. We have a drafting academy at, at Crystal River, I mean, at, at Citrus. Um, and I think it's really exciting that we have the number two and number one and number two in the Southeast drafting programs in Citrus County that produce the largest number of certified drafting students. Citrus and now actually its extension of Crystal Rivers. But are they academy and how are we supporting that and, and what defines it being an academy? In the years ago when they started, kind of there was this huge tie that you would declare a major at a high school and, and some of the academies came out of that but it's it's changed and so I think we it's a good time to readdress it I still think that Citrus has done an amazing job without having that a draw I think they deserve a draw to have that academy as well yeah and I just wanted to have a discussion on it I think it's important for Citrus High School they've got a, um, a great program there but um, when if there's something that we can meet the needs of the drafting program would be there. I, I'm sure Mr. Hilder has talked about some other possibilities that we should look at. You know, as an outsider, just thinking about the Health Academy, and I was over at Christopher High School, I visited that program. I think it's a great program, and I don't want to cause anybody to be nervous, but, you know, I look at the fact that we have a hospital right across the street from Citrus High School, uh, you know, wondering if there's ever an opportunity to make some changes or to do some things different. Don't forget, you, we've spent We've spent a millions of dollars though developing a, a a campus that with an infrastructural you know you've got laboratories there that that have testing so that they can do CNA testing. We're one of the only schools in the in the nation that can provide some of those you know six station state of the art dental facility. Those were all done as part of that. That's that's. You will, you will start stepping on some toes pretty quickly uh, with well, that. And, again, like and there's a hospital, of course, just up the road there. Crystal River would remind you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Mr. God, I um, just want to not fin finish the conversation, but it is worth conversation because we continuously have these conversations on what can we do to draw students to different academies because we know we've got a lot of programs out there that maybe we can form a an academy. So it's certainly worth the conversation at our level, but it's also worth the conversation at the board level. You know, we do strategic planning, we talk about the future of Citrus County Schools, so we can certainly add that on. And we don't want to duplicate. With the idea is for each school to have its own draw. I mean, you know, the we wouldn't want to have a, an international baccalaureate program in every school. We couldn't afford to do it, and it certainly wouldn't necessarily be um, a prudent to do it in that way. So I think that becomes part of how to marry an academy, a true academy, with, with maybe something that's going on there. That's where I think to, to a good place to at least start that conversation would be with the engineering program that we know, the drafting program at, at Citrus I like your idea too about how first we have to define the academy and what is the academy right. and meet those standards we define. Yeah, it's a right. Do, do you yes. want us to basically bring that information back to you on that? We're planning on that part of the next uh, uh, board workshop as far as State of the District Part 3. We can actually include you. Are you looking for status on those? I think I think that would be a great opportunity to like add that. that in there. Okay. All right. We'll work on that. And I would also like the stats um, on the ID program, too. I think that's a great program. But uh, we could we? We include that on State of Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we, we actually passed that one. It, yeah. if, they, if someone could get Mr. Dodd a copy on that, because that's already been, that was, he just missed it as part of his rotation. We do that on an annual basis. Okay. I will share that. That's in our Dropbox, and I'll share it with you. All right. Thank you very much. And if you haven't, I would really encourage you to go meet with Mr. Bittner um, and spend some time over there. And Yes, um, I have. I've already done that. Everybody else is here. I wondered if Mr. Bittner's here. <laughs> I was going to say, we can. Um, oh, Ms. Bittner's there. 
even better. And I know several students that's in that program, I think it's a great program, so I'm not um, looking to make any changes there by no means, so don't get all No, those. just the Health Academy. That's right. Engineering came up over here, the front chairman. Um, and, and Mr. Dodd, um, Mr. Legg, as you know, uh, Senator Legg is actually the chairman of the Educational Committee. So, yeah, he's, he's getting his pen out. I'm a I get quite nervous now, five years into this. I get more nervous when the legislature starts to take up educational issues. Um, because unfortunately, when they've been taking them up, uh, they have not always corrected them in the direction that we've needed. So I, 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 I want to think the best, but I've not recently seen the best come out of that. So. But I will say it's not a time that we draw back or step back from them because I've talked to several legislators this past week and they are getting pressure from, you know, they always hear from the superintendent association, they always hear from the school board association, they're starting hearing from parents. Mm -hmm. So I encourage any parent calls me that's got really heartache with testing to go ahead and forward that to them. So um, they are getting some pressure on things that they put in law. So that's a good thing. And the sidewalks we do, we've, we've done two projects, Central Ridge and Forest Ridge, and PGE is definitely one. Um, I think Mr. Uh, Dixon has talked about that some of what we use, the grants available for the other projects, we actually have some different options this time around. And uh, we have a partnership with the Board of County Commission when we do those, because it's done in cooperation with that. So um, we'll be working with them um, on this project. Anything else, Mr. Dunn? Ms. Ginger? Well, I, I tend to be Kento Middle School's SAEC, and it's always oh, delightful. Heather Wolferts puts on a show. Oh, my goodness. She's awesome. Um, the Kento's doing great. That's the only thing I've done lately. I want to, um, is it my turn? Your turn. I want to applaud the efforts district wide of our staff and the creativity with building the confidence within our students district-wide so that they are going into this testing season with success and they the creativity including um, an eye-opening moment for me an example of the creativity is with Bertha Brooks over at Forest Ridge Elementary who developed a focus on literacy and there's Mr. Mullins sitting in a classroom after hours in a Hulk costume. <laughs> and I, 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 he didn't look any different. <laughs> <laughs> he had some green muscles growing and I saw Marsha him. makes him wear that now at night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, wanted, I saw a different side of Mr. Mullins that I've never seen before. And to watch the kids and the parents just captivated, um, it was just really interesting. But I just, I cannot thank the staff out there enough for, for doing what they do to reduce the anxiety and you know you see the headlines and hear the stories and you see the testing dates and there's anxiety there and the staff is is really working hard to buffer our students from that and they really do make learning fun it's, i have one example after another but the one i wanted to spotlight was mr mullins otherwise known as the hulk <laughs> he's got it thank you Ms. powers yes. uh, the board attended the uh, uh, science Fair Awards on Friday night, and it was absolutely stupendous to see some things that children were working on. They received trophies uh, at the high school level and the middle school level, and uh, they were doing some phenomenal research, some uh, first-hand research to provide information that all of us could use, and they were rewarded for what they did, and uh, some of them were going out of the state. And we've had some that have gone to the state several times and won, so we're exceedingly proud of the students and, and what they're doing, doing in science. A second thing I attended was an Upward Bound celebration. I just want to mention Mr. Darling. I didn't know that he'd been in charge of that for like 26 years in this county with Upward Bound, uh, lifting up the students, uh, celebrating their successes, and that was phenomenal to see, too. Uh, another thing, I, I always read the books that are up for adoption. And uh, this time, uh, Mr. Plotter helped me to get the uh, Spanish and the French and the health books and also uh, showed me where to get the uh, music. I know nothing about music. Those of you who do, God bless you because I can't do it. But the other three, right up my alley. 
And so I looked over those and, and read them, and you can sort of depend on me because I'm going to read the books to see what they have <laughs> to bring up for adoption, particularly English, but all the rest of them too. And in college, I didn't have Spanish and French so long ago. It's, you know, you don't remember all those things, but you do know the structure. And when you look at a book, you know this will work, and this I don't think is going to work as well. And it, now the books, Mr. Plotter, they're in whose hands at this, at this moment? And, Dr. Geddes. Dr. Geddes. <laughs> Dr. Geddes has them. As a matter of fact, he's going to be airing the uh, public uh, website. So basically, we're going to start opening that web or that um, access for the community to start reviewing those books. Oh, fantastic. I appreciate it. And I appreciate y'all giving me access to that all the time because I know it's hard and a, a ton of books. In fact, I asked for the books and I, I was thinking there would be three or four I would get. I must have had 20 that you brought over. Oops. You got everything. <laughs> <laughs> I did. But, uh, so I appreciate that very much. Uh, let's see. Oh, I've asked Wes about the ethics, if you can do the ethics class. Did you look that up and see if you could train in the ethics? Would you, would you do that? Okay, I know we're going to be trained this time uh, down in Tampa, but uh, maybe the next time we can do it here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the 13th here at the District Service Center, Helen Pinelli is going to be doing the volunteer training. So if you know if anyone that wants to be a volunteer in the school system, 9 o'clock Friday morning, here, uh, they can be trained to do so. So it's only an hour for the volunteers and then for the mentors, another additional hour. And on a sad note, I just want to mention one of one of our uh, past students, Joey Usar, passed away over the weekend. And the services are going to be tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, at Hines Funeral Home, where it's, uh, excuse me, the visitation, 2 to 4 tomorrow at 6 to 8 at Hines. And then services, uh, our lady, uh, 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 at Excuse me, Our Lady of Fatima at 1 p.m. on Thursday. So, it's 27 years old and the student who came through our school system. So, sad that that occurred. Thank you, Ms. Um, <clears throat> as I've seen with many of you, we've been going to our SAC meetings. Um, Science Fair was a whole lot of fun, especially even just going around while they, they're judging. I think, Mr. Doug, you judged some of the, the those projects, and uh, quickest way to feel inferior <laughs> is to look at those projects and see um, they have pretty much, I think, solved most of our problems. <laughs> so, uh, I, I value that. Uh, one of the big council meetings that I got to go to was the Educational Technology Council meeting. This is where our, of course, technology specialists, our media specialists, um, our technology lead uh, individuals, particularly those on the front line, get together and Dr. Geddes, always a pleasure to attend and be a part of that process. And, um, and I know we have him because I saw him in here, uh, Mr. Switek, where there he is, I'm sorry, Mr. Switek. Mr. Switek, uh, remind us, I think it's September 19th. Yes. Um, I'm gonna do a little plug for him here. Uh, Ed Camp 6.0. Um, and for Ed Camp Citrus, it is the largest in the southeast right now, is it, or thereabouts? Uh, it's, yeah, it's probably the largest in the southeast. Um, sure. Ed Camp. <laughs> um, it is going to be this year on September 19th. I would encourage any and all board members, if you haven't attended, attend again. Um, Mr. Swiatek, who's going to be recognized here for actually just a piece of what he does. Um, I just want to give a plug. Please, if you Google uh, Ed Camp Citrus, you'll find a way to get complimentary tickets. Uh, we had, percentage-wise, less than 50% local. Yes, uh, we had about 150 attendees last year, and, and less than half of them were from the inside of our school. And one of the things I would say about Ed Camp Citrus is we are larger than Orlando's. Oh, yeah. um, they have uh, staff-wise about five times as many staff members, and they had what was their number of, of attendees? Just uh, I just just this past one was at Camp Orange, uh, which took place right after FEPC, and they had about seventy-five. Which we have uh, been typically about twice that or so. We so Citrus County, you know, when we recently had, and I think the board members know this, but we've got a nice audience, so I'm going to make this plug. Uh, Florida, I mean, the U.S. Department of Education did a phenomenal um, article on technology in Citrus County, the implementation of the one-to-one -one 
There's a lot of individuals in here where each of you plays such a, a big role in that and are continuing to make a big role in it. And I just want to thank you uh, for that. It is 5 o'clock and we have some presentations. So we're going to go ahead and move right into the Superintendent's Making a Difference Award. Okay, the first Making a Difference Award this afternoon, I will call Mr. John Lee from Hernando Elementary so he can introduce our special lady. Oh, she's the She's in the lobby. She's, she's in the lobby. Oh, she's in the lobby. He's trying to get Oh, There's seats down front. Marsha, Trevon, there's seats right here. Marsha, I you a I'm calling on everyone I know. Now this award, Mr. Weed will explain, but this is very special, Miss Simmel, when little girl can play football. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, we at Hernando Elementary School are um, especially delighted um, to bring recognition to this young lady's accomplishments. Um, this is Miss Rosie Garbick. And she is in second grade at Hernando Elementary School. She is sporting an outfit that fits the cause today. <laughs> Rosie um, participated in the in the punt pass and kick program at Hernando Elementary School. She won in her age division. Her <laughs> After she won uh, at the school level, she then went to the sectional, which was held in Newport Ritchie. And she broke all those little boys' hearts, too. <laughs> she then went and represented um, competition at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Stadium mm -hmm. during halftime of one of their games and won at the state level. She had, um, she had gotten introduced to Lovey Smith, the head coach of the Tampa Bay Bucks, where I heard him with my own ears say that if she went to the national level and won, he would allow her to help him with the first round pick. <laughs> so the Tampa Bay Buccaneers flew her out to Seattle where she participated in a national competition uh, in the first Seattle playoff game in Quest Stadium. And she won for her division. <laughs> but she is a, a shining star at Hernando and we are pleased to, to bring her recognition to you. Um, she really, really likes winning, I think. So. <laughs> She's a great kid and she's done a lot of great things in the last couple of months and we're proud of her. Thank you, Rosie.
It's my pleasure this afternoon to recognize Mr. Jerry Switek, who's a District Technology Specialist at the Technology Resource Center. Um, Jerry is in his 10th year in our district and his 4th year in his current role. And there's just a lot I could say about uh, Mr. Switek, and some of it's already been said by Mr. Kennedy, but I will reiterate he is the founder of EdCamp Citrus. I believe it was the 5th EdCamp in the whole country, is that correct, sir? In the world. In the world, okay. So, founder of Camp Citrus. Uh, it was one of the first uh, anywhere. It's now in its sixth year this coming year. And as it has been said, it's the largest gun camp in, in Florida, or one of the larger in the southeast. Uh, in addition to his leadership with EdCamp in our county, Jerry is involved in EdCamp nationally and at other events as a per participant and a presenter. Uh, Jerry participates in the instructional technology, technology conversation on a national and an international scale as a leader in the EdChat group on Twitter. He's also involved as a presenter for Simple K-12, which provides a live and archived web-based instruction for uh, educators all over the, the world, really. Um, Jerry is a Google certified teacher. And let me just tell you about that a little bit. Um, typically, Google has maybe 10 or 12 um, opportunities, academies around the world to invite a select number of educators to come and participate. So, for example, in 2014, they only had three in this country Atlanta, uh, Mountain View, California, Austin, Texas. But listen to the other cities, Sydney, Australia, Manila, Philippines, uh, Brazil, Mexico City, London, Amsterdam, and uh, India. Now, at each of those venues, only about 50 educators are selected. And so the competition is, uh, is large and strong, and Jerry, of course, was selected based on his professional experience, his passion for teaching and learning, and his su su successful use of technology in uh, school settings. So, Google certified teacher, he's a Google educational trainer, he's also certified in Google applications, and um, basically, a description of Google certified teachers, which really exemplifies Jerry, outstanding educators with a passion for using innovative technologies and approaches to improve teaching and learning. Now, what I will say about Jerry is it's not about the technology, it's about the teaching and learning. It's about impacting students, and I really value that um, with him. It also uh, says Google certified teachers are creative leaders who understand opportunities and challenges and have a desire to help empower others in their local community and beyond. Perfect description of Jerry. And they're also ambassadors for change who model high expectations, lifelong learning, collaboration, equity, and innovation. Now, in addition to all of that, uh, Jerry, this past year, was a finalist in 2014 for what are called the BAMI Awards. It's kind of like the uh, Grammy Awards for educators. And this was held in Washington, D.C. He got red carpet uh, limousine uh, treatment. And um, basically, this award is cross-discipline. It, it acknowledges the extraordinary work being done across the entire education field every day from teachers, principals, superintendents, to school nurses, support staff, uh, advocates, researchers, uh, early childhood specialists, <coughs> education journalists, parents, and students. It's a national celebration of the value of education, educators, and lifelong learning. Now listen to this. Every member of the list was selected because they are either world-class collaborators, made significant contributions to the field, or have modeled a valued quality of a 21st century educator. So um, 
college professors were in that group, principals, teachers, uh, education policy makers, superintendents, and school technologists of what Jerry is one of five in the whole country. So it's just a pleasure for me to recognize Mr. Swiatek this afternoon for the success he's having in his role, and I really believe he's worthy recipient of your Making Difference Award. Um, his colleagues have a saying, and that is that you ain't a tech unless you're a SWI tech. coaching position. And we're, uh, and so uh, we'd like to have you join us. If I could please have Tina Adams and Steve Ballmer please come on up please. I'm very excited to be here to share about Tina and Steve. Um, first they oversee the program Blessings in a Backpack program where the mission is to silence weekend hunger. Um, every Friday the students that participate get a plastic bags filled with easy to fix foods. These are distributed, there's about 500 of these bags that have gone out since early September. Uh, currently we have 32 students and 14 families. All children uh, in the family are assisted. So in other words, if you have a, one of our kids and they have two <laughs> siblings, those students also get our recipients of that, that food. The pantry is located at the Cornerstone Baptist Church, who is a great partner with us. They order the food, the inventory of the food, and oversees the teachers and students packing the food. Numerous hours on students and staff, Mr. Bomber, Ms. Adams, and Cornerstone Baptist Church make this possible, and it is such a great partnership. I would like to say that these are excellent teachers, and when you talk about programs, they, they make the program work. They work very hard in working with these students and so forth and making sure that they get these in a respectful manner. And I'm very proud to uh, nominate them and for them to be accepted for making the difference in work. Good afternoon, Mrs. Hemmel, Mr. Mullen, Mr. Bradshaw, and board members. Today, I would also like to recognize some staff members who have been helping feed our families and students in our community. I have here today Robin Martone, Stephanie Grotz, Kathy Gallery, and they have been instrumental in working with Blessings in a Backpack to feed families. We have right now serviced 23 families, and we have fed 62 kids. They've been impacted through this program. And not only have we helped our families and our community, but it's really brought our school community together. We have our students, we have our staff members working together to make this a process to help our community. So today I wanted to recognize their efforts because they truly made an impact not only on our school community, but our community in general. And 
I appreciate all you all do. Thank you. First, before we start, look around this room, okay? And I'm going to have you have a seat here for a second. <laughs> and I'm going to ask that uh, Sam's family, if you would come down and, and, and please come down front here so that you're going to get a, hopefully, a front row. <clears throat> well, Sam, I, hopefully we, uh, we tricked you a little bit. <clears throat> It's not very easy to keep a secret from Sam in the school district. <clears throat> We've had some exciting news lately, and as a school board, we wanted to recognize you. <clears throat> so, I want to first... <clears throat> I want to first share with the audience. As some of you know, on January 14th, 2015, the Florida Department of Education Commissioner, Pam Stewart, presented our own superintendent, Sandra Sam Hamill, and was named the 2014 LeVon Dukes District Data Leader of the Year. One of the best ways to understand this great and Special Achievement Award is to look back at some of its most recent recipients over the last few years. Last year's winner, Dr. Barbara Jenks, Orange County Superintendent, winner of the Broad Prize. Now let me share for those of you who don't know, the Broad Prize is one of the highest awards given to any public urban school in America for increasing achievement and reducing achievement gaps. Citrus County's achievement gaps match those of the Brogue Prize winning communities. But we're not an urban community, and so we don't get recognized. But Sam Hemmel already has achieved that in this community of that of that peers. The 2012 was Alberto, and I always, I, I butcher his last name, so Mr. Simon, if you can, Carvarlo, from Miami-Dade Superintendent. He was winner of the 2014 National Superintendents of the Year Award. He was also a Broad Prize winner. In 2011, Mary Ellen, uh, uh, Al I'm sorry, Alaya, and as many of you may know, uh, Miss Alaya, was recently uh, no longer superintendent of Hillsborough County um, because they have what we don't. We get to elect our superintendent. She, by the way, was a finalist in the 2015 National Superintendents. Uh, she is right now a finalist in the 2015 National Superintendent of the Year. Miss Bryant has said on many occasions, unlike Hillsborough County, if we had to uh, hire our superintendent, Ms. Hemmel, you would cost us a whole lot more than you do being elected. Well, we're not the only ones that wanted to share a message with you today. So we have some people that have videoed their message and they're going to share it with you. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and, whoops. Hang on a quick second. Um, right, get up there. I got my Okay. This is the first year that we formally 
um, honor the name of LeVan Dukes by including his name in this esteemed award. The award was renamed the LeVan Dukes District Data Leader of the Year Award in 2014 to honor longtime Department of Education employee Garnet LeVan Dukes in recognition of his numerous contributions to public education at both the state and national levels. LeVan was dubbed the father of data. This recognition is awarded to leaders who use data in creative ways to increase educator effectiveness and reach higher levels of student achievement. Today, I am pleased to recognize a superintendent whose exceptional leadership has resulted in higher student performance throughout the school district. This superintendent's inspired thinking, original approaches, and creative ways of using data have led to increased learning gains and enhanced the learning experience of all the district's students. Please give a round of applause for a surprised superintendent to receive the LeVan Dukes District Data Leader, Leader of the Year Award recipient, Citrus County Superintendent, Sandra Sam. that ever since. 
single day. The other one, wait, just for the media, the other question I ask right after that is I always say, how would that read in the newspaper? So <laughs> to work with many wonderful school and district leaders throughout my career and I can tell you that Superintendent Sam Hill is one of the best in our state and an example of outstanding leadership nationwide. At the January State Board of Education meeting I had the privilege of recognizing her as the 2014 LeVan Dukes District Data Leader of the Year. What makes Superintendent Himmel stand out among the other accomplished finalists is her tenacity to examine data trends, use the results to drive new initiatives, and share positive outcomes with teachers, parents, and leaders in the Citrus County community. Her data-driven focus and exceptional leadership skills have led Citrus County to be recognized as a high-performing school district eight years in a row and many of her schools to be ranked among the best in the nation. When she's not busy running an A-rated school district, she dedicates her time to mentoring other Florida superintendents. Superintendent Himmel is an education leader we can all learn from and someone I deeply admire. So Sam, on behalf of the Florida Department of Education, I want to thank you for all you have done to make Florida the best place to learn, to work, and to live. On behalf of the Citrus County School Board, we want to congratulate our own Superintendent Sandra Samhill for receiving the prestigious LaVon Dukes District Data Leader of the School Year Award for 2014 from the Florida Department of Education. Superintendent Helm has established a shared vision and clearly defined beliefs and practices that recognize the importance of data to improve student achievement and to guide the decisions and actions of all who influence the lives of Citrus County's diverse learners. Our superintendent continuously reminds us of the important role that data has in our decision-making process that ultimately leads to a student's success. She welcomes innovative thinking, original approaches, and creative ways that improve learning for students in Citrus County schools. You know, Sam has established policies, programs, and practices for data use that have a profound impact on student placement and student achievement. Citrus County Schools achievement are directly related to Sam Hamill's focus on the importance of quality data, quality practices, quality staff to enhance learning. Our district continues to excel under the leadership of Superintendent Hamill, her team, and the dedication and work of our administrators, teachers, staff, and students of Citrus County. Congratulations, Sam, and thank you for your determination and service to our students, our teachers, to our schools. Education system in this community for decades, 
and she brings to the position the heritage that, that her dad uh, helped her with from the very beginning, helped her get organized as a, uh, as a leader. What, what Sam Himmel brings to the table is her leadership skills. She knows how to get things done. She knows how, how to use data to make decisions to help students. Well, congratulations, Sam, on your recent award. Well deserved. And we do, of course, know that we have the best school system in the state of Florida. We have some great students coming out of our school system through the dedication of you, the school board, and all the teachers and support people in our school program. And we have our Hope Not a Event program that we are taking into the schools this time, into the voter education program. And hopefully the students will realize that the there's a lot of military folks, veterans, who have sacrificed a lot for us, for our right to vote. So again, congratulations and keep up the good work. On behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, we would love to congratulate Sam Hipple and the Sousa County School System for winning the award. One of the most important things in the community is the quality of our education, and certainly when it comes to economic development and becoming a sustainable community. So Sam and your team, keep up the good work. The Chamber is proud to work with y'all. Congratulations, Sam, on behalf of the Citrus County Education Foundation. Uh, we just want to express our uh, appreciation for you and for everyone at the district who is part of winning the LeVon Dukes uh, Data District Leader of the Year Award. Uh, it's such a great honor. Uh, we are very humbled to be uh, able to work hand in hand with this district because the amazing people like you and everyone at it that makes our school system the best in the state of Florida and one of the best in the nation. So, again, congratulations and thank you so much for everything you do for our students here in Citrus County. Hi, Sam. This is Arch Gooding with Rolling Thunder, Florida Chapter 7. I'd like to congratulate you on your report you just received. And I'd also like to thank you on behalf of Rolling Thunder for all the help that you give the community and all the help you give our chapter. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mrs. Himmel, on your most recent award. I cannot think of someone who deserves it more. Over the years, as I've been involved in PTA here locally and now on the state board, I uh, have, can always count on you when I have an issue uh, bringing forward by the parents. Uh, you are responsive and um, approachable, and, uh, and we always can work together to take care of any situation that might arise. <laughs> I want to introduce to you all our friend, our leader, our superintendent, Sam Hemmel. words to say but I do accept that honor on behalf of our school district. I look around the room I see great staff members. I think of our little group who won the pump pass and kick and nothing makes me any more proud than our students being involved, our community. I couldn't ask for a better community. If people ask me around the state why how do you all maintain your performance? And it is because of our great staff. I feel like that we've got great students but it's our staff that motivates our kids to do what they do and it's our community. And on behalf of the Citrus County School District, 
you all give and give to us all the time. If Dad was alive, he would have me auction off the uh, <laughs> trophy today, but I won't do that. And, um, but I do on behalf of everybody. And, and you know, education's seen more changes in the last few years than ever before. And we're getting ready to go into probably the worst time we've ever with testing. A lot of anxiety, teachers are giving tests that we're not even familiar with. We're giving, or teachers are giving tests on standards they haven't even talked yet. But what I don't think we will ever lose in our county is the relationship between our staff, our students, our principals, to our staff, and our relationships to our community. Because I try to tell legislators all the time, what you're doing to our public education system Sorry, y'all, but you're going to have to hear all this right now. Um, because honestly, it's, it's people like you that go out to our legislators and beg for them to make some changes or at least to slow down this process. We've had students come to us before that's been, and, and I've used this example for years to the legislators where they, a little girl watched her mom get almost beat to death, and then she comes in the next morning, has to take a Florida rights test, and they want me to pay our teachers based on that kid's performance. This is the most unethical unfair thing we've ever done to teachers I've ever, ever witnessed. But, on the, on the good note, I agree. If I could do a cartwheel, I'd have done one. Um, and a cartwheel is what kept me out of secondary PE, too. But um, I tried that on a balance beam and wiped out half the class. So, um, But on behalf of our school system, it is about our relationships with everybody. And we talk about that in our staff meetings. We talk about that in our professional development meetings. We talk about that when I get our principals together and they share how we do our relationships because that's what's the most important thing. I think our students will do as well as any other student across the state. The whole state's the same um, issue right now, but I know that our staff has put every minute of their soul into our kids. So on behalf of me, the Citrus County School District, thank you all for today. I kept looking at Rocky, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> I kept going through the agenda. I'm not recognizing Rocky, then I saw Jerry, and then finally I thought I saw Dennis, and I'm thinking you're going to take us out to eat because I'm not cooking now. <laughs> Good thing, but, <laughs> but on behalf of our school district, thank you all for your support. Thank you for being here today. It just means a lot from the bottom of my heart. I love every one of you, and I tell everybody every day I pray for everybody in our school system. Um, and I just think that we are the best of the best. So, thank you for being here today. I'm gonna bring up um, Frank if you'd come up real quick and um. Recently, the Inverness City Council um, did a proclamation, I believe, and, and I'm going to hand it over to Frank real quick here. Thank you. When I, when I got the frantic email, we, we don't call each other anymore, we email. When I got the frantic email, I swore this was either going to be about money or the city of Inverness doing something. <laughs> However, it is with great pleasure, and you, and you know we love you, we really do. And Inverness is proud as a community to have five educational facilities within it. We truly are. There's a transmittal letter from the uh, city clerk to accompany this, but from the city council and mayor, certificate of re recognition uh, awarded to Sandra Sam Hemmel, the city of Inverness, which is to recognize individuals who serve the city and community in various capacities and as superintendent of Citrus County Schools, Sam has established policies, programs, and practices for data storage that have a profound impact on student placement and student achievement. Congratulations on being selected the 2014 Lavon Dukes District Data Leader of the Year based on the accomplishments of uh, the accomplishments Citrus County has made throughout her leadership over the past 10 years. It is with great pleasure that we award this to you. And he doesn't love all the facilities in town because he hates the traffic. <laughs> I'm smiling right now. <laughs> Board members, I'm going to adjourn, but I'm going to ask if uh, some of you would stay so that Mr. Gangler could get some pictures with Ms. Hemmel. And uh, it is not always this great honor that we get to have all of you here. So, um, I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. We forgot our 530. Do we have any? Um, we, you know what? The beauty is I'm going to step away from the microphone.
and ask if anyone has any public comments they'd like to come forward at this time. This is, uh, I'm sorry? No. Well, I would oh, no. Yeah. You can, if you want to. Okay. Um, <laughs> if we, uh, do we have anyone else that would like to come forward at this time? With that, we're going to go ahead then and adjourn. And uh, again, you uh, don't need to dismiss. You can stay here and enjoy Sam for a little longer. Thank <laughs> you.